subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button i welcome all of our guests abhay ji tahir ji mantri ji ramir upadhyay ji and all the three authors सभी सभी का बहुत बहुत स्वागत है चार भक्तम नमामि विघ्नेश्वर पाद पंकज ओम या कुंदेन्दु तुषार हार धवला या शुप्रवस्त्रिता या वीणा वर दंड मंडित करा या श्वेत पद्मासना या ब्रह्माच्युत शंकर प्रवृत देवै सदा वंदिता सामां पात सरस्वती भगवती निशेष जाट्या सो विथ दैट आई स्टार्ट फॉर्मली आर प्रोग्राम टुडे ओके सो लेट मी लेट मी टेक ओवर समीक्षा जी फॉर अ मिनट सो लेट मी ऑल्सो वेलकम एवरीबडी Namaste and so swagatam and uh, we have uh, participants from North America from Europe and from India so a very good morning to everybody in North America a good afternoon to those in Europe a good evening to the friends in India and just to set the stage we are we are gathered here today for the USA book launch of a very special and remarkable book which is Delhi riots 2020 the untold story and here i want to share a couple of my thoughts so friends as we know America is the land of the free and the home of the brave as Americans we take pride in those values but the question is what makes you free it's said that the truth shall set you free the book that we are launching today is dedicated to the pursuit of truth it brings forth an investigative account based on ground research of the events in delhi in february of this year now another part of freedom a very important part of freedom is a value that we hold so dear to our hearts both in america and in india and that is the right to freedom of speech and expression friends this most cherished right came under assault earlier in august when bloomsbury that was supposed to publish this book pulled out of that at the last minute under pressure from the international pseudo liberal cabal please note that this cabal is anything but liberal it pretends to be liberal but is actually illiberal and intolerant of all ideas different from its own so i congratulate the tridevi team of monica ji sonali ji and prerna ji for persevering through all the obstacles and hiccups along the way and bringing this book to the world welcome to the event monica ji sonali ji and prerna ji i also congratulate sankrant sanu ji and his uh, garud prakashan publishing house for stepping in publishing the book and effectively nullifying what the pseudo liberals wanted so welcome sankrant ji i also welcome abhay asthana ji our chief guest our keynote speakers tahir gora ji and david froli ji and also uh, we are we are very fortunate today to have with us honorable minister shri ramveer upadhyay ji who is joining us from india thanks mananiya mantri ji for joining us and so swagatam welcome I also welcome all the sponsoring organizations all our participants and viewers who have joined us on Zoom and our back end support team and just to sum it up for all of us for all the organizers and for me personally this event is a celebration of our right to free speech and our emphatic rejection of all those who believe in censorship of free thought by banning books and by stopping publication of books Our goal here today is to make sure this book becomes an international bestseller. Okay, and so with that address, I will uh, actually invite Ajay Shah ji, who is our, uh, who's representing the World Hindu Council, which is our primary sponsoring org. Yeah, Ajay ji, please so, go. Good morning, everyone, and uh, good morning. Uh, so I'm really proud to. Uh, you know help launch this book in north america as representative of world hindu council of america or vhpa and i just would take a couple of minutes to uh, i think i've been given about 5 minutes to talk about vhpa 
um, and why we are, uh, you know, we are so proud to be participating in this particular launch. So this is the 50th year, almost to the month of the founding of Vishwan Upanishad of America or World Hindu Council of America. As a 50 year old organization, we started with education of our children and uh, the next generation, how they would grow up to be Hindu and how a Hindu can remain a Hindu in America. And so we started with Bal Vihars and with summer camps and we evolved into a campus or we evolved into starting a campus organization called Hindu Students Council, which is now the largest Hindu student organization independent of VHPA, uh, but largest Hindu student organization in America. Uh, then we, we did a lot of activities that are related to preservation of Dharma, whether it's the Hindu Heritage Day or Dharma Prasar Yatra or our biggest program to date, which was Global Vision 2000 program to commemorate the 50th, uh, commemorate the 100th anniversary of Swami Vivekananda's speech to the Parli World Parliament of Religions. And we do seva activities uh, all over. One of our projects uh, was Ekal Vidyalaya, which is now an independent organization supporting uh, 100,000 one-room schools all over Bharat. And now they have evolved into a major organization supporting health and Gramothan and all the other things. Support a child, which is now supporting over 3,000 kids every single day in Bharat and Seva in America. They also are active in various uh, advocacy related causes. American Hindus Against Defamation, for example, was the first Hindu anti-defamation organization anywhere in the world. And we've been now around for over 20 years. And this year, we have started Hindu PAC, a policy research and advocacy way, uh, initiative of World Hindu Council of America. So with all these things going on, why, do we think, why are we sponsoring this? Today is different. It is different because Hindus, as never before, are under attack in US. And Hindus are under attack uh, in, from many fronts. And it is, uh, Hindus are in, under attack, not just in terms of uh, organizations like Dogbusters that physically attack Hindus, but also it's almost the parallel or mirror image of what happened with Macaulayism in America, where the school textbooks or the, uh, the you know, uh, uh, or the, uh, even, a, uh, you know, just a day for yesterday, a Hindu running for an election came under attack for merely attending a Hindu event. Uh, and this, per, and every single Hindu organization, every single Hindu politician, other than the ones who have sold themselves out, uh, every single Hindu kid on campus. In fact, there was a, I can tell you that there's a, there are some kids, teenagers, who did a, a you know welcome puja to a dog, a little puppy that they brought home, and they were labeled as casteist. So this is how Hindus are against attack in America, and I think that uh, there is there's nothing really more cruel than person being killed and riot. And I think at all levels we have to be to particular book is really bringing out the truth, and we are hoping that through this medium, the Hindus. Uh, everywhere uh, in around the world, whether they are being attacked physically or whether being whether they are being attacked in other means, all kind of come together and really give impetus to Hindu unity to stand up for a Hindu's right. Thanks a lot, Ajay. So um, we will go to our speakers. Before I go there, uh, just want to uh, inform everybody that uh, this program is being hosted. This event is being hosted by. Deshpak the Patriot, which is a social media platform. And um, we will, uh, you know, through the chat, we will share uh, with all of you the uh, Facebook and Twitter links for Deshpak the Patriot. And we really appreciate if you can just uh, take a couple of minutes to visit these links and, uh, you know, like or follow as you wish. So just wanted to let you know. Thank you. And let's move to the bulk of our program now. So our first speaker will be Sankrant Sanuji. Sankran Sanuji is, uh, you know, is, um, is a pretty esteemed individual. So let me just uh, speak a few words there. So Sankran Sanuji is an entrepreneur, writer, and researcher, all in one. He is the founder and managing director of Garud Prakashan, which is the publisher for this book. He is a graduate of IIT Kanpur and the University of Texas at Austin. He spent nine years at Microsoft Corporation earlier on and holds six technology-related patents. He is well-grounded in the Bharatan traditions with a daily spiritual practice of yoga, kriya, and dhyan. 
He is the author of the mesmerizing work titled The English Medium Myth, Dismantling Barriers to India's Growth. He has written extensively in various publications in India, USA, and UK. And among those in Manushi, Amar Ujala, The Hindustan Times, The Seattle Times, The New York Times, and The Times London. So that's, that's quite a list. And his popular blog is on Suleka.com. And with that, I will turn it over to Sankranji. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abhishek Ji. Wonderful to be here. Um, I guess the first order of um, work is actually to do the launch of the book itself. So all those who have a copy, I'd like um, to invite you to, uh, to, to bring up your copy of the book. Um, this, is the, this is the new book that is now being launched in the U.S. Um, and for all those who are, uh, who are not having a book, they can just raise, our, raise their hands in blessings. I always tell people that Garuda flies on the wings of blessings. So Garuda flies on the wings of blessings and so do all, all of our books. So thank you. Thank you very much. And all of those who do not have the book, this is now also uh, available on Amazon USA. So you can go to Amazon USA and buy it. Of course, you can buy it from our Garuda website in India, garudabooks.com, which also ships worldwide. But uh, so you can go, go to garudabooks.com. If you're international, you can write to international at garudabooks.com. And you can also use this link to go to Amazon. Um, and I'll put this up later as well, grpr.in slash dr2020k. DR2020K will take you to the Kindle version and also the paperback version on Amazon. So with the book launch, let me give you a little bit of a background. And this background will start with a historical perspective, not far from where we are sitting in, in uh, North America is the Yucatan Peninsula, just south of the border of the United States, it's still in North America, the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And this is the place where the Mayan civilization was. When the conquistadors, when the, the Spanish uh, Catholics conquered uh, this peninsula, the Mayans had a lot of their history written in codices. And they burned pretty much all of the codices, saying that these are superstitions of the devil. So they, they burnt their entire knowledge and their entire history that was written, only four codices survived. So one of the first act of colonizations is always to destroy the existing knowledge systems of the people who are being colonized. And the second is then to rewrite the history, to rewrite the history based on what the colonizers want to tell. And in India, after the British control, the colonization took on even a more subtle, uh, subtle process. Earlier, there was a lot of physical destruction, but later on, this, the, the destruction of his institutions, of scholarships, um, of indigenous knowledge systems, all of that happened. And then the British wrote our history. They actually commissioned the people to write in theory that was meant to show that that India was constantly being invaded and everything came from the outside. So what's the big deal if the British also come? And they, they created fake stories that, that, that created conflict between people, that created conflicts and, and literally founded this thing called the caste system by assigning people into lists and groups and making all the static uh, systems. And then later on, those very systems that they had created were used to attack our civilization. So one of the very important steps forward for us to decolonize is to start by being able to tell our own stories. We have always been a storytelling civilization and being able to tell our own history, to be able to tell our own stories and in our own terms, without gatekeepers, without other people determining what is a political politically correct to be said or what is not politically correct to be said without other people determining who is going to get a platform to speak 
and who's who's going to be deplatformed at will based on the whims and fancies of a of a colonial publisher and the and their decisions sitting in UK about what's going to be published in India and who's going to read and who's going to who's going to be able to to tell their story. So this is really the way I see this this very important event that has happened, and I have to commend the authors on the courage and bravery, you know, all over the U.S. in academia and. When I first read the, that document, I was just stunned at the level of partisanship in that document. Nearly a third of the people killed in Gujarat were Hindus, but they did not manage to find a single Hindu victim. And this document that was tribunal report in 2002 became the standard internationally for the history that was written. And the, the, the corrective on that happened much later and was much too slow. So in this work, I really have to commend the authors for being on the ground, for able to be able to document the reality. Come, again, it is always the, that, that the narrative builders, the international media, that is the one that builds the story and says, this is what happened. Even today, you have things like Wikipedia that have a completely one-sided biased accounts of the events that happened. But being able to tell our own story, being able to put it um, and being able to publicize it and everyone who, who and this is the, the overwhelming support that happened to the book, you know, within a day, 15,000 books were sold off the Garuda website. And this is a show again from Hindu voices coming up and saying, no longer will our voice be suppressed. It wasn't the story uh, even of a book or a, or a publisher, it became the story of all these people standing up and raising our hands saying, we are going to go ahead and buy this book because we, we no longer are willing for our voices to be sidelined, for our voices to be suppressed. The, the fact that we are able to put forth and years ago, interview a single Hindu victim. Whereas when you look at the what, is, what has been done in Delhi Rights 2020, it has been written with a lot of sensitivity, it's written with a lot of objectivity. People from the, whoever has been been hurt and injured, people from different communities, their their stories are being told, they are being highlighted, as well as highlighting the nexus that is behind creating this violence. A very toxic mix of far uh, left communist groups. Uh, most people do not know, and again, this is part of how the narrative is, is controlled. That the communist Maoist groups are by far the largest terror groups in India. More than 50% of terror related deaths in India are, are due to the far left groups. And this has internationally been documented and discovered, but it's a fact that is, that is very less known. And then the phenomenon of these groups um, having urban center support has been called urban naxals, which we had documented in an earlier book that had come out uh, from Garuda, we had actually created this term urban naxals by putting it on the cover of a previous book. They were make up and say, no, this is wrong. What is happening is wrong. This blockade is wrong. And this is being taken over. You know, there, there was an element of peaceful protest, but now it's being taken over by outsiders that are coming in and that are far more fundamentalist and radical that do not want to have a dialogue. They do not want to have a discussion. It's not about democ democratic dissent. It's not about protest. What they want to do is burn the city down. They want to burn the city down because that is the way that they want to show India as a place which is falling apart, which is which has all this unrest. They want to target the government. So the, the goal was never something which is the framework. And so uh, they they actually document in the book that uh, that Molana Daud Amini and Mohammed Shamin were were actually trying to go to the blockage site and trialing the protesters, this is a problem. And they were being attacked by the protesters um, and, and, and being made to shut up and, and not, not being able to even control the situation. So again, this is amazing, amazing work of courage uh, by the authors and, um, and you know, also of, of compassionate, objective, 
reporting from the ground of actually going and meeting people of of documenting it really doing the homework and really this is a very good example for many of us who can take inspiration from that other hindu groups of actually going and doing the homework and then also writing it in a way which is which is not you know which is not simply a, a you know a diatribe it's it's written in a very very uh, neutral fashion it's written in a way which is which is accessible to many people so that that's also very very important and and again i'm i'm very honored to be be part of the the team with the authors in bringing this book out and again please please go go to the websites go to amazon write your reviews spread the word let's make sure that the truth does not get suppressed this time namaskar wonderful thanks a lot sankranji so our next uh, speaker is our esteemed chief guest the chief uh, guest which is abhay astana ji and abhay ji i'm just trying to unmute you and you are unmuted but let me just uh, uh, talk just a little bit so abhay astana ji is um, a fellow at the nokia bell labs cto directing research in cognitive self reliable networks of the future uh, these are networks that continuously learn on their own and heal themselves Earlier, he led the design of the VLSI processors at Intel. He got his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from IIT Kanpur, where he went back to teach from 1983 to 85. And then, outside of science and technology, his passion is to learn about Hindu dharm and history, practice it, and pass it on to the children. His mission is to help Hindus living in America remain Hindus and, through their lives, contribute to the richness of their adopted land. he is the president of the world hindu council of america which is uh, uh, the vishwa hindu parishad of america abhay ji please uh, honor us with your uh, speech please sir shri gurubhyo namah so my greetings to ahir ji monika ji <coughs> and sankrantu ji navaratris are just a week away and we could not have chosen a better occasion to launch either we define ourselves or get defined by others the choice is very clear but history tells us that we did not make clear choices in the recent past and allowed others to define us the disastrous results are in front of us there is a wealth of writing talent in the hindu community that is both expressive and persuasive there are many media and publication houses with great journalists anchors news writers scholars opinion makers authors bloggers social media gurus and show hosts but sadly very few with the courage and the grit to stay and stand with the truth today however we have in our myth three rare fearless courageous and bold writers who have blazed a new trail so in times of political correctness telling the truth is truly a revolutionary act as embodiments of durga saraswati and lakshmi they have shown unapologetically the truth cannot be suffocated or suppressed painstakingly they gathered real stories and narratives from ground zero to prove incontrovertibly that the riots were planned and executed by urban naxals and jihadi elements in delhi the book provides an explosive revelation of the plot behind the riots 
how they were planned and executed, how weapons were procured and stockpiled, and exactly what transpired. It captures the carefully orchestrated buildup to the riots, the CAA protest, the jihadi communist partnership, the unrest and the violence in the universities, and the drama at Shaheen Bagh. <clears throat> the book is a daring example of how the mainstream narrative is to be challenged and busted with facts and real ground reports. That's exactly what Sankrantuji was saying. It makes us aware of the larger threats facing us in the garb of NGOs, the urban Naxal outfits, and the radicalization of people. As the investigations and the court proceedings continue, it is becoming evident that the architects of this massive, heinous series of episodes from within the country and outside aided and financed the anti-refugee, anti-humanitarian, pro-terrorism protests, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the Minority Commission are just three examples. Even though with this book, the cover-up and the real masterminds of the daily riots stand exposed, I would like to conclude with a word of caution. The Delhi riots and all the preceding events were a mere experiment. Many such experiments will follow. So what it calls for is and to prevent such tragic events from repeating in the future. So today, we have a very renowned and distinguished panel with us. I'm honored to be in their August company and look forward to listening and learning from them. And once again, congratulations to the authors. Hariyo. Thanks, Odaiji. Samiksha, you should be able to speak now. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Odaiji. Thank you, Abhishekji. Now, I would like to introduce about my organization, Padmuda Social and Charitable Trust. And I'm honored to be a part of this event, to be a part of this historic event, in fact, in the US launch. So the Padmoda Social Charitable Educational Trust is dedicated for community development with the proud traditional rural India in its epicenter. Our team comprises of successful professionals, research scholars, alumni of IITs, IIMs, and prestigious universities of Europe, USA, and India. We organize and participate in conferences and discourse to learn and connect around the globe for exploring, learning, and relating present and traditional Indian culture, science, and technical skills. We also work with people at grassroots level. We have been teaching rural kids formally in Padmoda School on the campus present in India, and also online, where kids in villages, cities, and US all join together. So uh, let me introduce the next speaker. So our next speaker is, um, Ramvi Rupadhyayji. Ramvi Rupadhyayji is our Honorable Minister uh, who is joining us from India. Sri Ramvi Rupadhyayji has been in active politics since 1990. He has been a member of the Legislative Assembly of Uttar Pradesh from Hathras since 1996 till now, and he has won continuously. He has been a Cabinet Minister three times and has held important departments like power, medical education, transportation, and rural development. His wife has been an ex-member of parliament. His entire family has been serving society through politics. 
and he is one of the most prominent leaders in the Hindu community in Uttar Pradesh and in India. So, uh, Mananiya Mantriji, we are honored by your presence here today. Okay. Very Rawls 2020. उनके लॉन्च के समय हमारी बहन समीक्षा शर्मा जी ने मुझे भी इस कार्यक्रम में सम्मिलित किया उसके लिए मैं अपनी बहन समीक्षा जी को धन्यवाद देता हूं उनको बधाई देता हूं उनको शुभकामना देता हूं और इस दिल्ली रॉयल 2020 मुक्ति लेकर बहन मोनिका जी सोनाली जी और प्रेरणा जी को भी बधाई देता हूं मैं धन्यवाद देता हूं उनका आभार प्रकट करता हूं उन्होंने दिल्ली में जो दंगे हुए उसमें अपनी जान की जोख जान को जोख में डालकर एनआरसी एवं सीए कर रहे थे उन संगठनों को बड़े नजदीक से उन्होंने देखा और सारे प्रकरण को इन किताबों में उन्होंने लिखा है निश्चित रूप से हमारे खास करके हिंदू समाज के लोग जिनमें गरीब हैं, दूषित हैं, पिछड़े हैं, उनका सबसे ज्यादा नुकसान हुआ, जानमाल की हानि हुई, उससे हमारे जो आने वाली पीढ़ियां हैं, उनको निश्चित रूप से ये पैना मिलेगी, उनको ये सबक मिलेगा कि इस तरह की दंगाइयों से, इस तरह के अराजक तत्वों से कैसे बचा जाए, उस पर वो एक बार पुनः मैं अपनी बहन समीक्षा को और इसका इस दिल्ली 2020 बुकी ले का बहनों को बधाई देता हूं शुभकामना देता हूं जय हिंद जय भारत धन्यवाद धन्यवाद मंत्री जी वी आर ऑनर्ड बाय योर कमेंट्स एंड नेक्स्ट आई विल मूव टू द नेक्स्ट स्पीकर हु इज वन ऑफ आवर कीनोट स्पीकर्स which is Tahir Ji. Okay, so just to introduce Tahir Ji, Tahir Guraji is a broadcaster, editor, publisher, translator, writer, novelist, and poet. He is the founder and CEO of Tag TV. He is the director general of the Canadian Thinkers Forum. He is the secretary general of the Coalition of Progressive Canadian Muslim Organizations, a member of the Cross-Cultural Roundtable on Security and a recipient of the prestigious Queen Diamond Jubilee Medal for his services in Canada. Also, he's the author of seven books in Urdu, one in Punjabi and one in English, senior analyst at Wikistrat, director of the Project Ishtihad Canada, and the founder of the Progressive Muslim Institute Canada and Muslim Committee Against Anti-Semitism. Tahirji, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kumar Bhai, and thank you all of you. Uh, uh, I am a Hindu born in Muslim faith. See those uh, daily rights 2020 basically as anti-Hindu rights staged by local and international forces to disrupt President Trump's visit to India. The instigators and planners of Daily Rights 2020 aim to portray India as an epicenter of communal violence, but partially they were failed, but largely they were successful beginning on 23rd February and caused chiefly by Hindu mobs attacking Muslims. Muslims were marked as targets for violence, unquote. So this is the propaganda everywhere on the mainstream media. However, the material, I'm quoting from uh, their team of the book, Daily Rights, the untold story during their many visits to the right affected areas of Northeast Delhi revealed the facts otherwise. The research team met both Hindu and Muslim victims of the violence and religious leaders of both communities who attempted to de-escalate the situation. 
the book contains eight chapters which narrate the fact and evidence based story of the dharna planned and executed by urban naxal and jihadi elements in delhi the book features narratives from hindu and muslim victims stories of the dalits who were brutalized in unimaginable ways maps showing the insidious urban naxal jihadi model of writing fir's of properties that were burnt and wrecked and the post mortem reports of ankit sharma and ratan lal unquote so the determination of our brave or sonali ji prerna ji and the new publisher of the book sankran san sanu ji courage made it possible to provide alternate and correct narrative and perspective of the scenario our to present our correct narrative so long finally we have started pushing us to counter the world of lies and propaganda others play victimhood card and bully us in each and every walk of life they shout and do not let us talk they scream and do not allow us to present a stop us and hate us we can counter lies and propaganda only through appropriate strategy once again congratulations okay thanks tahir ji okay so let's move to our next speaker our next uh, keynote speaker is david frolly ji so let me just take a minute to talk about david ji okay david frolly ji who is also called or also popularly known as acharya vamdev shastri in uh, vedic circles so david ji is a founder and director of the american institute of vedic studies he has been an american hindu teacher and a hindutva activist for a long time he has written numerous books on topics spanning the vedas hinduism yoga ayurveda and vedic astrology and in 2015 he was honored by the government of india with the prestigious padma bhushan award yes david ji you are unmuted please please go ahead sir okay hari om shri guru bio namaha i thank the organizers for inviting me to this important event and in a field that i have been working in for many years i congratulate the three authors on this important book on delhi riots 2020 manika arora sonali chitalkar prerna malhotra Uh, they have shown uh, tremendous patience, uh, a willingness to examine deep and controversial issues. I am sure they have faced uh, personal challenges or even personal attacks for the work that they have done. And uh, it is great that they have been able to accomplish this. And I also want to, of course, thank Sankrant Sanu. after bloomsbury uh withdrew the book at the last moment and from what i understand it was outside india influences that were responsible for removing the book as someone who was also published with bloomsbury in the past i am also uh quite uh unhappy disturbed or upset with what was done with this particular book uh because uh these problems have been going on for a very long time now the first thing i want to do is to just take a quick look at these overriding issues and what we see in terms of books about india 
uh, is that they are largely by people who are outside of India, and particularly outside of any Indic or Bharatiya civilizational. It's only in the uh, last few years that we've been seeing some books on the Hindu influences coming out in Penguin, uh, Bloomsbury, Bloomsbury originally brought out Yogi Adityanath's uh, uh, biography, which was also challenged quite a bit, but managed to get through. But now it seems that these publishing houses are also unwilling, more so as time goes on, to continue expanding these points of view. Uh, and then, of course, we do have publishers in India, again, they promote Indian-based authors, but largely of a Marxist view or a view connected to the uh, Neruvian era in which the Marxist view was given strength and in which the Marxist view entered academia and also was able to uh, write the history books in India as well as form the uh, view of what went to the media. So the Delhi riots case was an example of this biased reporting. And it's already been explained in very good detail who did that and uh, why. Again, portrayed as uh, victims, a Hindu uh, attack, when it was a planned insurrection of sorts and anti-Hindu. Uh, why does India matter? You know, we have the India diaspora all over the world. Uh, we have strong Hindu presence in the United States. We have the adaptation of the Bharatiya-based knowledge, yoga, Ayurveda, Vedanta, uh, even Buddhism, which comes uh, from uh, India. And we also have a significant uh, example relative to Tibet. Tibet has also been taken over, oppressed, and yet the global media has abandoned the Tibetan cause overall. And even though the Dalai Lama is honored, the cause of Tibet is not. And a lot of these same issues are coming up to relative to uh, Tibet. Now, India is rising under Narendra Modi and India is gaining strength in the world, economically, politically, uh, militarily, and yet the Indian point of view is hardly represented anywhere. And that is why we need to include this Indian voice and Indic point of view, at least by way of representing the other side, giving balance and allowing a complete uh, perspective on the issue. Even that is seldom allowed. In most discussion, both sides are represented. And a lot of these issues relative to India, like the Delhi riots, when it came up on the media, only one point of view was represented. And many people were also misunderstood in Union, a Marxist-Leninist revolutionary party. But when these, in, when these individuals, like the head of the organization, were introduced in the Western media, they were called innocent students victimized by the Hindus, though they themselves had been uh, disturbing and corrupting JNU from functioning overall. And this was one of the uh, uh, preceding factors for these riots. It's an ongoing factor that we can see in various different uh, areas. And here I want to especially thank uh, Sankrant Sanu and Garuda Books for uh, bringing this publication out because otherwise it would have been an example of how India-based teachings, Hindu-based points of view can simply be suppressed and removed so no one can go into them uh, at all. We could peek off even to publications like New York Times or uh, Washington uh, Post. So we do have to keep these things in mind. 
Now, relative to the uh, specifics of the Delhi riots, I was in Delhi when this happened this year. Uh, and it's very curious, it's been noted already, that the riots occurred along with Donald Trump's visit to Delhi. This is no coincidence. It also shows how this was uh, pre-planned. Because naturally, when a foreign dignitary of such status is there in Delhi, then we must have the proper security for them. So all the security was moved towards Donald Trump free hand. There was also anti-Trump media globally that would be happy to criticize uh, him. And so we could see it was planned well in advance. And yet uh, it was judged immediately as something as the Hindus attacking the Muslims. Now, the interesting thing is, and it's clear that the instigators came from uh, a certain part of the uh, community and was even connected to the the certain media interest, which only promoted a one point of view. And so it's fairly clear now, you can't have a riot where their guns were used, uh, where massive stones were gathered, where Molotov cocktails were thrown, that were coordinated in various ways, if it wasn't uh, premeditated. So the premeditated nature of that has come out. So what we can say here is that the book has largely been validated by what has happened relative to the police investigation and the ruling of the courts. In fact, there should be a footnote along what happened since, and as much as possible, countering the wrong views that has come up. But the fact is, the, uh, there is a need for an alternative voice of India in the West. It's already there in Delhi to a great extent with certain stations, certain writers, but it's under threat there too. So I'm very happy that Garuda Prakashan is taking up this cause and that they will take up other such causes in the future. And they, they deserve the support of Hindus in the West and also of anyone who wants a balanced view on what goes on in India. We're learning so much from the gurus of India and recognize the value of its teachings and how this colonial Marxist era continues uh, their uh, views. I say Marxism is the worst form of colonialism. We've seen what they their view in India needs to be exposed. We've also seen the, what jihadis have done. And we should note that many Islamic countries like Saudi and UAE are making alliances or opening up to Israel, which these same jihadi groups are quite opposed to. So it's not even across the Islamic world. So there are many issues here. Uh, but again, we much congratulate the authors, a great step has been taken forward. We must congratulate Sun Prant and the, in, and the efforts of the Hindus in America and globally to set this agenda clear and to make a positive view and the right balance of opinions go on. And we need to have more and more dedication and determination following this cause out to the end, making media accountable to Dharma and having a media that reflects the Dharma of our own. So with these words, I send you my best regards, best wishes. Uh, may all of us come together and lead this discussion and bring this renaissance of Hindu thought and place of India on the global stage and uh, resurrection and restoration of its dharmic civilization for the benefit of all. Shri Garubhyo Namaha Haryom Tat. So. Thank you, Vamdevji. We are, we are honored to have you with us. 
uh, now we would like to invite the Trinity, the authors of the book. The book is an incredible account, a vivid account of the sequence of events and victims. Welcome all the three authors joining us for this formal launch in US. Congratulations because the book is already a bestseller and have been talked about for weeks now. I would start from Prerna Malhotraji, who is well known to us, but what it is to me is how she defines herself in her own words. She writes that I am a university teacher by a profession, a nationalist by heart and soul, a proud Bharatiya Nari. So I welcome Prerna ji. First of all, I'm as an author. And they saved our baby. They saved the work of our labor. So we are indebted to Garuda Prakashan and to all the authors who stood there for us, for the cause. They adopted the book. Baby, all of them, it became a Bharatiya book. So we are thankful to each and every one who stood there with us. And they made it a kind of bestseller, as Sankranti said, that in a day, just in one day, 15,000 copies they were sold. So it's all because of you. So I'm really feeling very humbled. I want to talk about the story of the book, how we went to the field and how we did it. We are a group of women based in Delhi. And the Katwa case happened. This we did uh, when uh, Article 370, it was set aside in Jammu and Kashmir. We went there, we went to Kerala, we went to different places. We went to the Naxal affected areas of Chhattisgarh. So we have been are doing such kind of fact findings, but we have been writing reports and submitting to the authorities. But this time, when we wrote the report, so there came an idea that we should bring it out as a book. And why did we go to the field? Because we were sitting in the heart of Delhi and our dear city, it was burning for almost three days during Donald Trump's visit, it was, it in fact shook us to our inner selves. More than 50 people, they lost their lives. All of them were innocent. Innocent people of Delhi, citizens of this country, whether they were Hindus or whether they were Muslims, they were the citizens of this country. And we felt that pain when we went to the ground. We met the people of both the communities. We met the leaders of both the communities. And we found that it was that conspiracy, pre-designed conspiracy by a few people. I must say a few people. Because the majority people of this country they do not want writing. They don't want to take anyone's life. So as Sankranji mentioned that we had met Molanas over there who were trying their level best to remove the protesters from the road. And we found evidences that whatever was happening in the media, the propaganda which was going on, that it was an anti-Muslim pogrom. No, it wasn't. We can say it because we saw it through many evidences that it was initially an anti-Hindu riot planned over multiple days. The kind of paraphernalia of writing, it was gathered over days, over weeks, whether they were acid pouts or whether they were uh, kind of the other instruments of writing. And we also found that there was that conspiracy which was hatched by urban Naxals and jihadi forces. It was very much clear from the 15th of December 
I said from 15th of December, though the riots happened in February. Because there is a clear cut pattern from Dharna to Danga. There is that pattern which we could very well see when we went to the ground. And I must say that everyone should read this book because they must understand the pattern. This pattern may be implemented elsewhere too. This pattern may be implemented today in India, maybe tomorrow in some other country, maybe tomorrow in some other city of India. We saw an example in the Bengaluru riots. And just yesterday I was reading that even in the Hathras case, one uh, uh, woman, an, an Aksar, who was residing at the home of the victim's family, and she was trying to manipulate the entire narrative, and she was trying to sort of, uh, I mean, manipulating uh, the entire, entire thing into uh, converting it into a kind of riot. Here too, the, uh, that effort was made. And in Bangalore too, they just used an instance, which was also, uh, we read the report of another fact-finding team, and we came to know that many of the uh, ways in which it was carried out, it resembled the Delhi riots. So today it's Delhi, tomorrow it's Bangalore, and some other day it could be some other city. So we have to tell our youth, we have to tell the citizens of this country that who are the people who are actually responsible for the killings in our country? Who are the people who want that when the, prime, uh, the president of USA is there, then when international media is there in their presence, how to create a narrative which puts India into bad lights. So all that kind of, uh, say, uh, this bonhomie between the urban Naxals, the communists, and the jihadis, it has been visible for so many years. I must say that even when this PFI its name has come up in the findings and media reports have also uh, mentioned PFI's role in funding and other things. Scholars, intellectuals, they have been going and making presentations. And when Jamaat Islami, when they initiated, launched this uh, Madhyam uh, media house in Kerala, the who is who of the left, they tried to write for it. So they have been supporting each other. Apparently, they would show that they are against fundamental, uh, fundamentalist Islamic forces, but actually they share that uh, kind of uh, solidarity with each other and they also take each other's strategic support. And what Whatever we saw in Northeast Delhi, we found a clear cut pattern that how some, some locations, some people, they were targeted. They had people in their minds, some people in their minds, and some locations in their minds. So that is why when from the uh, Dharna sites, they came to the main that confrontation they initiated the violence and there was a pattern in violence too and even in the uh, dharna sites or in fact all of them they were situated near one or the other masjids so there we could see many other patterns forming up on the ground and the stories which we came across, they were heart rending. A person who has just gone out to get milk for his children is 
he reads the bullets of jihadis. And what we saw on the walls of those sites, we could clearly see that there was an outsider influence. Outsider here means some people who uh, uh, the kind of language which was, which was used. So it all showed that it was a handiwork of both, where the mind of urban naturals, it planned it and it was executed by another team. It was funded by someone else, maybe some outside agencies too. So, and moreover, the way Ankit Sharma, one of the uh, intelligence officers of IB, Intelligence Bureau of India, he was murdered. He was allegedly, allegedly murdered in the house of uh, the, one of the councillors of Ahmadmi Party, which is there in power in Delhi. So, and the kind of cuts the post-mortem report uh, shows that he had more than 50 wounds on his body, wounds with knives and other sharp, uh, sharp kind of those wounds were there. And the way bodies were found in Nalas, so they were heart wrenching. A woman, her house is burning. It's all smoggy, it's all in flames. And she goes to the first floor of her house and she has to throw both her children in the back street so that they are safe. And those children, they are now undergoing uh, some psychological treatment too. So that is the kind of situation. Those three days have passed. 53 lives are lost. Shops were burnt, houses were burnt, cars were burnt. But then who, who tried to exploit this fault line, this ethnic fault line to defame India and to create trouble in India? We must understand that. And there are many other questions which have come up through the entire saga of this book. The way Bloomsbury backed out. So the entire uh, narrative about freedom of expression and the people who shout about it, who talk of dissent, but they never practice it for others. So they have also stood exposed through the entire episode. And we have also come to know that for years, some people sitting in UK, some people sitting elsewhere in the other parts of the world, they have been deciding what will be written in India, what will be read in India. So till when are we going to allow it? Till when our children won't be able to read the truth? So an alternative ecosystem is the need of the hour. And as some of you mentioned that the way Garuda Prakashan has come up, same way, more such voices, more such platforms, they need to be created so that we have the Indic voices, we have the voices of truth in West and in other parts of the world. So that, so that wrong, wrong narratives, lies are not spread. Tahirji mentioned that even today when we read the Wikipedia and the article which comes before us, it is full of lies. So we have to see how to control these platforms also. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Wikipedia or other uh, platforms. So. This episode has given all of us a chance to be 
united, a chance to work together so that we can preserve our Bharatiya civilization, so that we can hand it over to the next generation, so that we can work for dharma, so, can, so that we can work in the direction of dharma rakshati rakshita. With that, namaskar to everyone. Thank you, Kediji. Uh, we surely believe in the collective ecosystem in the country which will speak of this civilization and its narrative. And in this chain, now I would like to invite Sonali Chitalkarji, who is the next author speaker for us. Sonali Chitalkarji is an assistant professor of political science at Miranda House, University of Delhi. She has contributed her unbiased academic rigor in the book. So we welcome Sonali Ji. Over to you. Namaskar to everyone and uh, pranam to uh, elders Abhay ji, uh, Pandit Mamdev ji, Tahir ji, and all the elders uh, watching us today. My colleague uh, Prerna ji has already uh, spoken about a few things, and uh, the speaker who's going to come after me, uh, Advocate Monica Arora, would be uh, laying down uh, further details about the book. I will only be making two very broad points. So the background to the book, which uh, all of us know, is the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019, which was uh, uh, a legislation passed by the government of India. Uh, just yesterday, uh, I am on Twitter, and I got a, a message from one youngster who told me, uh, Ma'am, was the formation of Pakistan a good thing and the only task that was undone uh, was the transfer of populations? So my answer on Twitter and uh, in every platform is an emphatic no. And uh, why do I say this? This My emphatic no, it forms the background to the Citizenship Amendment Act in a sense. So uh, rewinding to 1947, neither was partition accepted except by a small part of the political populations accepted at all. So what happened uh, as a result of uh, the acceptance of a uh, partition by this small ruling dispensation at that time was that we have huge pools of Hindu population in Pakistan, in present day Pakistan. Just two examples are that we have a huge, almost 85% uh, Hindu population, largely Dalit population in Thar Parkar in Sindh, and a similar configuration uh, may be slightly higher. Uh, am I audible? Because I am getting a prompt which says check sound. Uh, am I audible? All right. So um, I was yes, talking about uh, it, yes, I was talking about all right. I was talking about areas in Pakistan of Hindu population, and I was mentioning the Chittagong Hill, tra Hill tracks, which uh, I think the population of that area is almost over ninety percent uh, non-Islamic tribal. Uh, so uh, what followed uh, the partition was a long history of persecution of these populations in Pakistan especially after we had uh, Zia ul Haq coming to power and taking an extreme turn, uh, which also meant uh, the predominance of, of uh, Sharia law which in this context and has nothing to do with Indian citizens, uh, Hindus or Muslims. It has everything to do with minority populations in Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh, in the index civilization, but because of the lack of another term. Uh, we are, Indic civilizations are inherently multicultural. Uh, Tahirji used the term multiculti, which was uh, actually a nomenclature used by uh, V.S. Naipaul, and it's not used in a very uh, privileged sense. Uh, multiculturalism, uh, multiculturalism is something that the U.S. Uh, testify that it is uh, an item of great debate even in Canada. 
in canada basically a lot of work had to be done uh, to uh, you know uh, bring forth this uh, uh, context of uh, multiculturalism so we famous state policy after uh, you know uh, uh, scholars uh, none lesser than kim linka and charles taylor uh, did a lot of work on uh, this theory but this is something which india has innately understood we have what is called shaivism which gives us the basis for uh, recognizing diversity for recognizing differences amongst people so um, so for us for india uh, a burqa has never been a problem or a security issue but for us in india that is the diversity of language canada but we already inherently have such a wide diversity of language uh, it schedule has 22 languages and all this boils down to the basic indian pulse of uh, ekam sat vipraha bahuda vadanti so for us diversity multiculturalism different religions uh, religions which came from outside our boundaries are not something that we have not accepted it is something that india accepts inherently however what happened in the delhi riots was an attempt to rip apart exactly this indic way of life so what was done uh, construction of a very big lie over the citizenship amendment act which is very sound law uh, and there was a deliberate creation and exploitation of minorities fears uh, in the context of the caa then uh, also very dangerously came the theorizing that uh, we are not secular from those who were leading the anti caa riots this was the narrative that came up we are not secular we are islamic uh, and uh, those uh, inspiring this movement were clearly uh, coming from the jihadi context so uh, uh, the anti caa in the anti caa protests we had uh, you know statements that uh, those who are leading this are looking at an alternate islamic identity you only have to listen to the speech the entire 45 minute speech of sharjeel imam to understand what i'm saying so uh, what next was being done uh, the idea was that all networks of cooperation which have existed within india for centuries they were a target so what were these networks basically the elders of the community were targeted uh, elders of the muslim community were targeted those who could create peace those who could create dialogue those who could create a democratic bridge were targeted so the point that i'm trying to make is that these attacks which happened uh, these attacks they happened uh, but they are not something that will weaken us Uh, sankranti spoke about how uh, the mayan codices were destroyed and how the mayan civilization therefore uh, was disabled however i am an eternal optimist i believe that for us even i am no scholar i am not i am no great scholar of dharma but what happens is that in indic communities dharma is a way of life jo dharan kiya jaye wo dharm hai aur and this feeling is it runs in our blood it runs in our veins therefore the control for such events for such disruptions is our own way of life our own dharma it controls our every thought word and action therefore i am still very optimistic that despite the delhi riots uh, and despite other events that have followed that there is great hope that we will still establish the uh, veracity and the uh, stability of the indic civilization about the book like i told you monica ji would be speaking in a lot more detail uh, so i will i will stop here uh, what i will say is that and i speak on behalf of all the three speakers i will say that our strength comes from the blessings of elders like uh, abhay ji Uh, Vam Dev Ji, Tahir Saab, and uh, we are so indebted to the kind of support that we have got. Uh, with your blessings uh, and with the blessings of all the Bharat Manshis, I am sure we 
we will come out with more such books and uh, we will be uh, making uh, you know we will be bettering our record as far as establishment of truth is concerned with that i will say namaskar and thank you so very much for giving us this opportunity to speak to each other namaskar yes so thank you sonali ji and now i would like to invite our next author speaker advocate monica arora ji she is a lawyer in the supreme court of india and we all know that she loves her voice for freedom of expression and she says we have a right to speak and right to write is it too much to ask for this in new india so i welcome monica ji monica ji over to you thank you i would like to start in hindi and if i can say david ji or ta एक आग लगती है जब हम किसी ऐसी घटना को देखते हैं लगता है जाएं और वहां पर फैक्ट फाइंडिंग करें तो हम लोगों के घर में गए जिन बैठी थी अपने गोद में बच्चों को लेकर हमें नहीं समझ आया था हम उनसे क्या पूछे वो हमें क्या बताए कहते ना स्टोन फेस हो गया था सब चीज हम लगातार गए हम बार बार गए हमने धर्म नहीं देखा जाति नहीं देखी हमने सबका इंटरव्यू किया और जो उसके बेसिस पर ग्राउंड जीरो से रिपोर्ट हमारे पास आई उस रिपोर्ट को हमने सरकार को दिया इस फॉर्म में दिया ये हमारी ग्राउंड जीरो से रिपोर्ट थी जो मार्च में हमने सरकार को दी और जब सरकार को ये रिपोर्ट दी बिलीव मी इतने चैनल न्यूज पेपर ने रिपोर्ट को कवर किया एक व्यक्ति ने कहा कि एक लाइन भी गलत है एक लाइन भी झूठ है फोन नंबर है सब कुछ है हम सोच के नहीं गए थे क्या सच दिखाना है जो सच दिखा जो ग्राउंड जीरो ने बोला हमने वही सच दिखाया लोगों ने कहा मोनिका जी पेना जी सुमा जी किताब की फॉर्म में लेकर आओ हमने इस किताब की फॉर्म में लाए ये बुक जो हम सबके सामने आज है हमने पब्लिशर्स को दी बहुत से पब्लिशर्स को दी कुछ पब्लिशर्स ने पैसे मांग लिया आप पैसा दीजिए तब हम आज बहुत बड़ा कार्टल है ये तो पहली बार देखा डेविड जी इट्स अ बिग कार्टल कहीं ने कहा हम इतने लाख रुपया दो तब हम छापेंगे कहीं ने कहा हम इतने हजार दो तब ये छापेंगे ब्रूस वही ने कहा कि ठीक है हम पब्लिश करने को तैयार है मैनुस्क्रिप्ट भेजिए हमने मैनुस्क्रिप्ट भेजी उनके पास उन्होंने ओके किया कॉन्ट्रैक्ट साइन किया एक एक वर्ड को लीगली वेट किया लीगली वेरीफाई किया पब्लिश करके हमें सौ किताबें दे दी कि आप हिंदुस्तान भर में जहां देना चाहो आप इन किताबों को दीजिए आपको जो रिव्यूज लेने हैं कमेंट्स लेने हैं वो लीजिए और अपना लॉन्च कीजिए हमने लॉन्च प्लान कर लिया ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ ऑगस्ट को लॉन्च प्लान कर लिया हम ये नहीं कहेंगे कि वो इंडिया लॉन्च था क्योंकि वो एक ही लॉन्च होना था हमें तो आदत नहीं थी किताब लिखने की हम तो रिपोर्ट्स लिखा करते थे और रिपोर्ट सबमिट किया करते थे तो पहला लॉन्च था एक ही लॉन्च था जैसे ही वो लॉन्च में जाने लगे सिस्को वेबेक्स के लिंक में तभी मेरे पास फोन आया ब्लूमसबेरी इंडिया का मोनिका जी सम जोकर्स आर ट्वीटिंग ब्लूमसबेरी यूके एंड प्रेशराइजिंग देम टू विद्रॉ फ्रॉम द बुक सर व्हाट डू यू मीन हाउ कैन यू विद्रॉ फ्रॉम द बुक पब्लिशर यू हैव पब्लिश दिस बुक दिस इज योर बेबी हाउ कैन यू अबाउट योर बेबी हु इज जस्ट अबाउट टू बी डिलीवर्ड यू कैंट किल योर बेबी is pity side you can't do it they said no monica ji we have lot of international pressure maybe we will have to with who were the book does not see the light of the day we have no idea about them we simply went to our launch we launched the book and during the launch we came to know bloomsbury has given a statement that they are withdrawing from the book they said we are signing by the book we are signing by the authors but launch program was not ours this was the first statement second statement was no no we are withdrawing from the book Now, withdrawing means suddenly people started buying the book, and it became number one bestseller on Amazon in the political category. People started buying this book, and Bloomsbury just to hit the sales, they removed the link from Amazon. They they delisted the book. People wanted to buy the book. We had written the book. Our publisher had run away, run away because of international pressure to do with them, but. we don't know what to do so we asked from social media what to do social media said 
Monica G, go with an Indian publisher. And they started writing, Garuda, Garuda, Kurji. And we signed a contract there and then on the 3rd of August, we went with Garuda Publishers. Now, same day Garuda Publishers, they put their Hindi and English cover page of the book on Amazon, on their website. And same night, one night, Tahirji, they sold 15,000 copies of the book. One night, they sold 15,000 copies of this book. Now, people started buying this book. Now, there are a few things which bothered us as writers when we got together on 23rd on a Sunday. When we were supposed to distribute our books, we were sitting thinking what legal notice to give to Bloomsbury. Means, should we be happy? Should we be sad? Our book was there, our book was not there. What to do? Now, a few important issues which we discussed were first, who are these people who are afraid that the truth of Delhi riots should not come to light? So, we started. Who said, Bloomsbury, how can you publish this book? Second was Nidhi Razdan of India. Uh, she said, oh, this new India such books will come. Third was Atish Tasir, who is a Pakistani-American writer who wrote uh, in Times Magazine, uh, Modi Divider-in-Chief, and I got, got a big slap on his face when Modi ji won by a landslide victory thereafter, big margin thereafter. He wrote, uh, William, do something about it. A writer, a Congress party. डॉक्यूमेंट्स को कोट करके हमने सच सिखाया आप देखिए हमारी किताब में आठ चैप्टर है पहला चैप्टर इंट्रोडक्शन का दूसरा चैप्टर हमारा है थियोरी ऑफ अर्बन नेक्सलिज्म एंड जिहादिज्म वी आर कोटिंग देयर डॉक्यूमेंट्स सीपीआई माओइस्ट पार्टी डॉक्यूमेंट्स ऑफ 2004 दैट इज एसटीआईआर दैट इज स्ट्रेटजी एंड टैक्टिक्स ऑफ इंडियन रेवोल्यूशन व्हाट डू दीस माओइस्ट से ये माओइस्ट कहते हैं इंडिया वाज नेवर इंडिपेंडेंट रिमेंस वी नीड टू हैव अ रेवोल्यूशन इन इंडिया how to bring it about in forests in tribal areas in backward areas we have our nexus they run the system they run the government they have the power there government cannot intervene there we must focus on the modest operandi how oh, go and work in slums work in agricultural area among farmers among labor among women among working class among the minorities take up their issues be one with them, take up their issues, genuine causes like fee hike, minimum wages, etc. And thereafter, instill them with such hatred towards the system and the government, and they become against the government, against the system, especially against Modi and others. That time Modi was not there. But they thereafter said that we are against fascist Hindutva. Their one and only enemy, which they pronounce as army and fascist Hindutva. And what are our target groups? The target groups are Dalits, Muslims, women. We have to create a narrative. Man versus woman, Hindu versus Muslims, upper caste versus lower caste. This is their document. It is not my document. They were afraid that we are quoting and we are stating their document. We should not come in the mainstream. We should not come in public domain. And thereafter, from chapter three onwards, as we all know, we say this was Dharna to Danga model. It was a pre planned conspiracy. See, people were not happy in minority community that is Muslims because the Ram Mandir issue, which was 500 year old issue, had been sorted out amicably. To put the luck, which was against rights to equality, liberty, dignity, and justice for Muslim women, that thirdly, so is that the neighboring Islamic countries, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh. 
the minorities there have been persecuted and who are the minorities Christians who have been persecuted because of their religion they are living in india for last 5 years they must be given citizenship why because for last 70 years these minorities have been saying we were bharatiyas we were indians on 19 in 1947 15th of august we slept in india but when we woke up it was lahore it was karachi it was pakistan suddenly just about 15 kilometers from my house is new friends colony jamia milia islamia they had knives they had rods they had spiked rods they had all sorts of material they had guns and pistols and they started attacking the police and burning the buses now i must say police dealt with them with heavy hand police were basically people who were trying to organize a riot they ran to supreme court high court and they said give us justice tell the police to stop this lottery charge but until that time you and i we all had shown on social media that they were the perpetrators of crime so high court supreme court said nothing doing you stop this danga you stop this one can you imagine in front of me i was there in the court and they were literally condemning and raising slogans against the chief justice this is their intolerance they're intolerant towards the courts also and thereafter when they got no relief they changed their strategy all right have women have children in front and where they did not protest at the designated areas jantar mantar or ramlila maidan they came on the roads the most crowded roads of delhi the roads joining delhi to noida you are encroaching on the public land you are having constitution you are having tiranga on the stage but what kind of speeches are you giving you are saying giving speeches of anti modi anti shah anti india anti hindu tone was there the slogans were hame chahiye jinna wali azadi you wanted to divide india again into two on the basis of religion then you said tera mera rishta kya la ilaha illa illa then you said hinduon ki qabr khudegi hindustan ki dharti par kafiron ki qabr khudegi hindustan ki dharti par and entire media was not allowed only few people who palated what they wanted to they were allowed and what kind of radicalization was taking place in shaheen bagh you all must have seen that 6 year 8 year old kids they they were saying ha modi ame shah ko maar dalenge child was in the lap and the child was saying cheen ke le we see amma and appa he could see that small child but he knew what azadi was they are spoiling their generations and there was pfi police did not dalati charge the women what to do we are not getting traction so let's go to the areas these people came outside your and our houses and they were crying azadi azadi still police did not intervene and finally on 22nd of february at night the burqa clad women led by people of pinjara tor and other communist ladies they all blocked the metro station at 2 o'clock at night on 22nd of february morning 23rd of february 6 am they blocked the north east delhi road in jafarabad and thereafter it was chakka jam and riots happened this was a pre planned conspiracy in four stages the university violence the shaheen bagh violence they coming outside our houses in public protests and thereafter riots now prena ji has already told you we met victims we met victims who had gone to fetch milk for their children and they were shot by the snipers on the forehead she has already dwelt on that. that i will not go on that but three pertinent things i'll say and then i'll wind up my speech first is freedom of speech now i am the main lawyer for jnu i know that certain directionless people uh, when they commemorated abdul guru's death anniversary in jnu and cried abdul hum sharminda hai tere qatil ab tak zinda hai tum kitne abdul maroge ghar ghar se abdul niklega and abdul tere armano ko manzil tak pahunchayenge who was abdul guru he was a terrorist who was sentenced to being hanged by the supreme court why because he organized this attack on the parliament of the country on democratic 
temple of the country. He was a terrorist. Now they were they were commemorating his death anniversary. Who are having mercy for the atankis? They are saying rally in support of Rohingyas and they demolish the Amar Jawan Jyoti. And people said it is freedom of speech. Churchill Imam said that the Northeast India should be cut from entire India, and people hailed him as freedom of speech warrior. Prashant Bhushan, who is there in a few opposite cases with me, Prashant Bhushan said that Supreme Court is filled with corrupt judges. He says Supreme Court is denying fundamental rights to the ordinary Indian. Supreme Court has been put into a lockdown by the Chief Justice and. Supreme Court held him guilty of contempt of court, but this he was hailed as freedom of speech warrior. And the Twitter trend was, "Hum dekhenge ki Supreme Court hum dekhenge tum hamare khilaf kaise aate ho. Sarkar system hum dekhenge ki tum hamare khilaf kaise aate ho. Koi bhi vyakti jo hamare khilaf likhega, hum dekhenge tum hamare khilaf kaise aate ho. Ye hai ye masihas of freedom of speech." They want the freedom of speech only for themselves, but not for any other person in the world. इनके जो पूर्वज हैं, वो आपको कोरिया में मिल जाएंगे, कंबोडिया में मिल जाएंगे, चाइना में मिल जाएंगे, वेस्ट बंगाल में मिल जाएंगे, आजकल केरला में मिल जाएंगे। थोड़े बहुत बच्चे खुचे हैं, वो हमारे मीडिया में और थोड़े बहुत जेनी में मिल जाएंगे आपको। बाकी तो they have to be rendered to the black pages of history. Put against uh, Lord Krishna on Janmashtami, same bad post, but Bangalore burns. The entire Bangalore burns. One CA is passed and Delhi burns in form of riots. The holy book is burnt in Sweden and the entire Swedish, a number of uh, towns there burn. So what you are saying is, and your posters in Sweden are elsewhere, that we will kill all those who insult Islam, we will behead them. They were fatwas. Please come up. Don't let your religion be hijacked by the fundamentalists, by the radicals, by the extremists. And last but not the least, may I say, thank you, India. Thank you, Bharat Vanshis. Our book was almost killed by this urban Naxal jihadi ecosystem. But Bharat Vanshis rose as one. We all are meeting for the first time today. But that connection, what we share today, the connection that we stand by each other, we stand by the truth, that we stand by freedom of speech, let the truth not be muzzled. Let the fake narrative be busted by hard facts. You know, I remember that whoever could write, they wrote on social media for us. Whoever could speak, made videos. And whoever could make posters, they made posters. Whoever could write a poem, rap song, whoever could make a cartoon. I remember one cartoon, uh, Sakranti, was made in which uh, I was uh, on a Garuda with my specs and Garuda was flying high. So <laughs> this was a cartoon made by some student. And what students write is, man, we have 100 rupees. We want 99 more rupees to buy your book. Other students volunteer that don't worry, keep your 100 rupees, we will finance the book for you. People are buying 100 copies saying one is for us, this 99 is for distribution for public libraries. And thank you all the authors. All of you, I say, means that's why I said on behalf of Sonali ji, Prena ji, myself, we all have a naman, we all have a vandan, we all have a vandan, we all have a vandan. So we are that decade of dissent. These are all documented. Penguin, Harper, Collins, all are written. They were scared that if Bloomsbury will give us our book, then it will come to a mainstream reading. People will also refer to it that it is the only truth that you are showing. This is also the truth. So this is the purpose of the future generations to write history for the future. लेकिन ये हिस्ट्री वो लिख नहीं पाएंगे जब तक आप सभी भारतवंशीज यहां बैठे हैं और सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो जो पत्थर चोट लगकर टूट जाता है वो कंकड़ हो जाता है पर जो पत्थर उस चोट को सह जाता है वो शंकर हो जाता है आप सब दिव्य हैं आप सब भव्य हैं और आपने ये जज्बा दिया है कि हम आज कह सकते हैं चाहे वो दिल्ली दंगे हो चाहे वो हाथरस हो हिंदुस्तान में कहीं भी कुछ भी होगा 
तो इनका जो फॉल्स नरेटिव है वो हम बस करेंगे जितनी भी सामर्थ्य है जितनी भी ताकत है और जितना ईश्वर हमें आशीर्वाद देगा तो जिसको कहते हैं ना कि जिंदगी की असली उड़ान अभी बाकी है जिंदगी के कई इम्तिहान अभी बाकी हैं, अभी तो नापी है मुट्ठी भर जमीन हमने अभी तो पूरा आसमान बाकी है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद धन्यवाद मोनिका जी अब हम अपने क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन की ओर पढ़ते हैं एंड आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट अवर मॉडरेटर कुमार अभिषेक जी समीक्षा जी एंड थैंक्स अलॉट मोनिका जी प्रेरणा जी सोनाली जी एंड ऑल द स्पीकर्स वी हैव बीन एब्सोल्युटली ऑनर्ड टू हियर योर थॉट्स एंड व्यूज सो थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर शेयरिंग ऑल दैट विद अस so we have been for this event we have been advertising and we have been collecting questions for a while and you know uh, not unexpectedly there have been a very long list of questions so there is a long list of questions we are we do we do not actually have uh, a lot of time to go over all of them but i think what uh, we will do is we'll take a couple of questions um, so that um, uh, you know the questioners can um, you know interact a bit the first question is from ishwar thyagarajan ji and ishwar ji i think you are unmuted uh, please go ahead and ask your question i understand your question is for both monica ji and abhay ji so ishwar ji please go ahead yeah thank you can you hear me yes okay thank you namaste to all the authors and thank you for uh, writing and also publishing this book you know like common men you know we, ha- we are rarely exposed to the the systemics behind how these kind of ghastly events unfold so in that sense you know i'm very thankful you know to educate us uh, my question is uh, this book is primarily about delhi riots the events leading to it and the aftermath Uh, there is also chapter 5 which talks about the shinebug model which was very instructive but my primary question is can we take um, is there a way to deconstruct the methodology behind writing as a generic process and the reason i am talking about such generic deconstruction is because then it can become an open paper like a white paper or a general material that everybody can be exposed to and that way government policy making agencies or law enforcement agencies you know, they can be like taught how this model works and what can be done to prevent this model from taking root at its inception itself right besides besides raising the you know obvious uh, awareness quotient i was thinking is there a generic deconstruction of this writing model that we can do based on this may i just start yeah uh thank you ishwar ji thank you so much as david ji also said that basically this was a pilot project this was an experiment conducted in delhi because of modi government they are unable to have other kind of experiments which they used to conduct till now they are under scanner their foreign funding has been regulated controlled so this was the first pilot project and if i am not wrong maybe hathras is their second pilot project reason being in delhi riots they pitted hindu versus muslims they exploited these fault lines in hathras they are doing uh, lower caste versus upper caste so the caste fault line they are exploiting so i think in our next book we are going to discuss this at in great detail that how these various ca- uh, fault lines they regularly try to uh exploit and these people if you see uh in fact i'll talk about sweden also and maybe black lives matter also you see there is a pattern pattern is to create chaos pattern is to create disturbance it starts with some genuine issue which is blown out of proportion and then when the people who are genuinely interested in these cases but suddenly these things are hijacked by those people we who lead to violence who lead to looting and those genuine protesters feel what's happening this is going all over the world so what we uh, realize is that in india also the same thing is happening you see in the same things elsewhere also so i think we are going to dwell on this and we'll be coming out with another book on this the next questioner is uh, dhaya bhai patel ji from new jersey Yeah. Can you please ask your question, sir? Yeah, Namaste, everybody. Uh, my name is Daya Bhai Patel, and I have been working 
with a bhai ji since 1994 with vhpa that's my identity uh, my question was is really about the you know i see so much I, i'm in usa so i i just uh, have a question about the legal consequences for all these people who are really doing criminal things well one of the i mean uh, manika ji is lawyer herself so her own there are issues where they are breaking the contract watch this uh, um, naxals uh, the reporters they are really being aggressive and really going with the mic and hitting the policemen in america if you be so by the police you they take you to the jail directly there is no question asked and then judge will take care of that so there should be some consequences for disobeying the police instructions it was really violent the way the this reporter girl was doing so maybe we can form some organization uh, that may specifically work on the legal things thank you jay shri krishna see all the laws are there in place all the laws have to be implemented we have extremely stringent laws i don't know what us but india we have extremely stringent laws that's why people like tahir hussain people like umar khalid are in jail and they are having the uh sections under unlawful activities prevention act in which bail is nearly impossible they are charged for murder they are charged for criminal conspiracy looting then destruction of uh, public and private property then illegal assembly criminal conspiracy so they are in for good and i've seen for the first time the kind of affidavit police is giving in the court such elaborate affidavits calling out the entire scheme of things how they all happened this time police is really really focused and uh, the from the affidavits uh, of the police in delhi high court and elsewhere i see that uh, be assured that these people had in delhi they had this danga up they couldn't do it they have been exposed uh, before doing it and now they think twice because of two things i always say 2014 when 14 when modi government came modi government came and he said there is a level playing field for everybody now leftists you will not only have that uh, platform have this platform for anybody and everybody who wants to speak the truth and secondly we had social media so we are not captive that if hindustan times uh, publishes our articles in india or new york times there then only we can be a writer we are not dependent upon nd tv that if uh, we talk of their sad story then only we will be called and we will be a big social influencer now your own facebook your own twitter your own whatsapp whatever platform you have if you talk substance and if you have truth with you people follow you you see the lakhs of people who have followed david g and others why because when people see that his content is there when people see that what they are speaking they are social leaders we must follow them so that's why because of social media because of modi in power these urban naxals have to have their residential elsewhere hindustan mein to chalenge nahi that is clear to everybody hindustan mein nahi chalega ji thank you thanks monica ji and thanks uh, uh, daya bhai patel so i think uh, so we are uh, running out of time um, so let's just um, so we'll end the q and a now and let's move to the next part so the ne for the next part i'll turn it to sankrant ji i'm just checking if if you need to please yes um, i wanted to quickly um talk about the book availability and also um, some of the upcoming books from from garuda so delhi rats 2020 book is now available um, on our website of course garudabooks.com uh, the website is still not set up directly for international orders so if you want to 
get international bulk orders, just email international at gerudabooks.com and uh, somebody will respond to you. And in the end, I'll also share my own personal email address at the end of this presentation. And now it's available in Amazon USA, Amazon Canada, and um, uh, different Amazon uh, shops in um, Europe as well. So you can just use this link, grpr.in slash dr2020k. So grpr.in is a short link generator and dr2020k is the, is the book um, link. Um, just quickly want to introduce some of the, the books that have already come out from Garuda. If you, if you are hearing the term urban naxals, this happened because we created a book and put urban naxals on the cover of the book. This was a title choice where we put urban naxals on the cover. And the important thing is that for the first time we were seizing the narrative and defining the terms. So far they used to smear and and create all kinds of terms, saffronization, this, that, and the other. And we were always def playing defense and we were always reacting. And this time we, were, we are going out there and we are creating our story, our narrative. And they were very upset with this term urban axles. They tried to run a campaign, I am urban axle, all kinds of things to dissuade it. Um, also this book, Saffron Swords, is an amazing book. All children should read it. The best comment I heard from a, from a high schooler was this is better than Harry Potter because it's so intriguing. The stories of women warriors. There's a Gujar um, girl, Rampyari Gujar, 20 year old who makes, makes Temur run. So amazing stories. G.D. Bakshi's Saraswati Civilization, Maria Words, Thank You India. <clears throat> and we have some upcoming books which are really, really amazing. Francois Gauthier's book has just um, been come out, uh, A New History of India, Unbreaking India by Sanjay Dikshit. This is telling the roots you know, the, all of the work that Delhi Riots team has done, which is on the ground reporting, um, this one is taking the roots of these agitations all the way to before partition, how, how, all, how all these different, you know, Islamic fundamentalist groups um, were, were, were setting the stage for what he calls New Madaina. And this, is, this book is again, amazing, absolutely amazing book. And we have another one coming up on Hindu mathematics and how it changed the world. I was so surprised to read some of the facts. This is by Dr. Kamble, who's an IIT Kanpur PhD. Um, he's doing a postdoc in physics in Germany. And he's showing that pretty much all of the mathematics we read today, algebra, trigonometry, arithmetic, calculus, the origins of calculus, less that this venture succeeds. And this is your publication house. If you write, want to write for it, please, my email is there, sankrant at gerudabooks.com. Please write. Um, you can take, uh, you know, you can take photos of these slides and uh, uh, be part of this movement. We, the, the movement is that finally we get to tell our own stories. This is the lesson from Delhi Rights 2020 also, which is brave warriors are on the ground. They are telling us stories. We need to enable their platform so that these stories get widely, widely known. So that is all for today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks Sankranji. Thanks for sharing all those details. And uh, so that brings us to the close of our virtual book launch event today. So I would like to thank the authors, Monica Ji, Sonali Ji, and Prerna Ji for sharing their insights and experiences in the journey that this book is. And of course, um, a lot of thanks to Sankranji for the launch. And as I said, Sankranji, you saved uh, the cause uh, of free speech against those who want to stifle it. Uh, I thank our chief guest Abhay Ji and keynote speakers Tahir Ji and David Ji for their very valuable uh, insights. And I also thank uh, Honorable Minister Rambir Ji for uh, honoring us with, with his presence all the way from the other side of the globe. And I thank all the sponsoring organizations, the World Hindu Council, Ajay Ji, uh, and the backend support team. And thank all our viewers on Zoom. Thanks all for being with us today. It has been a pleasure having you. And before I say goodbye, I will unmute everybody and let's just have a big round of applause for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thanks all. It's, a, it's been a pleasure having you and goodbye.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन